Oh, when we are up. Holy cow. There we go. This one is super pretty. We live? Yeah. What is up, everybody? I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Epoxy. We got a pretty cool show in, in store for y'all, you boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, we got some exciting news. The slab jig has been out of stock. Some drama with the slab jig. Let me tell you, we had a, a manufacturer go sideways on us and we had to completely resource every piece, part, and aspect of the entire slab jig. It took an undertaking. The GOAT, the greatest of all times at Stone Coat Epoxy, Cody. You probably talked to her on customer service if you're a Stone Coat OG, but she was the, the mastermind behind that. Her and I worked together to bring that bad boy back. And if you don't know what the slab jig is, guys, it is a tool my brother invented and patented. Uh, this bad boy right here, you use your router. It rides along your table. It levels twisted, warped, nasty wood slabs. That's what folks are doing to create those amazing river tables without having to yard your piece of a, your, your table all the way to a CNC shop, have them level it, it costs money. A couple hundred bucks gets you a slab jig. You get your router, uh, 350, right? You got your bits, you're good to go, about three, $400 investment in your slab jig. Search uh, wood slabs near me. There's gonna be somebody probably selling wood slabs. Pick those up for a few hundred bucks. Uh, you got about five, six hundred dollars into this investment at this point, right? Now you're going to buy some supercast epoxy for that river. We teach you how to do this on this channel, step by step. Woodworking is making a comeback. Slab jigs back. You fill that puppy with the supercast, let that cure. Then we're covering the top with our art coat or countertop epoxy. And now you got a woodworking table ready to sell or ready to enjoy in your own home. So this, we're gonna be hammering that slab jig. We got some amazing content coming, showing you exactly how to use it. We got a new video teaching you how to build it, but it's a really, really handy tool that saves folks a bunch of money uh, when they're in the woodworking game. And woodworking with epoxy, to me, is so much fun. Uh, countertops, I've made so many countertops. Countertops is more like work, except for this one. This one's gonna be sweet. This is gonna be a green Van Gogh granite. But countertops is more like, all right, time to go to work. Where woodworking, I'm now getting paid doing something I absolutely love. So that's a key to success that I found, guys. It's, you know, true American freedom is working for yourself. And if you could really do something that you enjoy and love for a living, you just found the key to happiness here on earth. That's not uh, an illicit substance helping you reach there. So guys, we got blue Van Gogh granite. I made this project here on the channel. I teach you step-by-step step how to do it. I actually installed this stuff. This stuff is insanely expensive, the real stuff. Uh, Van Gogh granite, it's like four to $500 a square foot, which is insane. I've only installed it one time in my 12 year granite career. And I went to a guy who owned a giant dealership, so he was loaded. Um, but anyways, I taught you how to do it using epoxy. What you're seeing right in front of me, clear epoxy. I tinted it with all the blues we have to offer and a couple special colors that I picked up over at artisttilldeath.com and RK3 Designs. They are both epoxy distributors that support Stone Coat. They use Art Coat. Rhonda also sells our products, but they have a couple unique colors that we don't offer. So I'm gonna showcase a, color of the, a few of those today starting out with this just resin color here uh called green diamond oh what a cool name and then this bad boy is olive green by just resin you could pick those up at rk3designs.com or artist till death chris give him a link chris is in the background on the command center we got nathan behind the camera and once again i'm mitch your host for today's live show we got q a happening Customer service is uh, elbows deep into training out in Michigan. So I'm here to suffice some of those questions for you. If you got project questions, you need a little direction or help to get that project started, feel free to let, the, let me know in the comments below. I got Chris putting our questions up here on a, ooh, you already got some in. Yay, live Mitch. What up Melinda Anderson? I have a couple questions for shower panels. Bam, that's right here. Do you do the ultimate top coat and I can't get the pink foam. Can I use a quarter inch plywood if I do epoxy on both sides to make it waterproof? That's a little bit risky. 
I don't know if I would do that. If they don't have pink foam, oh golly, I wish I had the name of it. Hold on. Bam. It's look uh, XPS insulation. I don't recall what that means, but I bet you Lowe's has a version of this. Lowe's or Home Depot or a specialty hardware store near you is gonna have this insulation foam. But I do do the ultimate top coat right over our shower panels, but I've also done it without any ultimate top coat. It's a vertical surface. I have a well, I have a well at my house. So I was really testing the hard water, how I could clean that off of this glossy surface. So far, so good. That tub surround is in the same exact condition as it was when I installed it. And I actually had my, my six-year-old do a full wipe out impact on that bad boy and it stayed solid. I first checked to make sure his head was okay. And then I was over there like, all right, all right we're good to go. So guys, let me, I got my epoxy mixed up. I mixed this up about 10 minutes before we started. So I gotta get pouring before this sets off. The longer you keep the epoxy in the cups, the shorter the working time is. So I'm gonna create an exotic pour, a dirty pour. That's where I tint all the colors and pour them back into my bucket. Then I take this bucket and pour it out right over the countertop. You could do this multiple different ways. It's a very beautiful, super easy for first time users to create a flowing exotic marble using epoxy. I've also created a tape dam. Why did I do that? That's because I'm going six ounces per square foot for this exotic pour. Um, I'm gonna make, take all my mixed colors and put them into my bucket here, and then I'm slamming it right onto the project. So this is a little green pearl. Oh man, I'm forgetting what these colors are. So I have green pearl, I've got bright green, forest green. Ooh, that bright green and forest green are very close. So I'm gonna keep like, uh, Nate, come show them what this looks like, bro. Feel free to pick up that camera. I'm just going all dark greens in this bad boy. And then I'm gonna come back and make a uh, contrasted white. We're just layering up my green colors now. And if I pour it down the side, it could create bigger blobs. This is that uh, olive green from Just Resin. Holy cow. So when you use pastes, metallics, dyes, all together, it can create a masterpiece because those colors are fighting for first place. This is that green pearl, that's gonna be sweet. Here's our green dye from Illumilite. No matter how much you put in there, that's always gonna stay translucent. It's pretty dang cool. Let's go this one. I haven't used this one in a minute. And then I'll kind of come and swirl some in there. And if I add it from higher, you can see it kind of already starts to mix and meld those colors in the bucket. I never do a tape dam whenever I'm doing three ounces per square foot. That's like your Carrera marble, that's your clear coat. I'm only doing this tape dam when I'm applying more than three ounces per square foot to my project. And I have way too much mixed up. That's partly because I'm gonna make some coasters and I'm gonna send those to a lucky viewer. I'm gonna send one of these new hats I'm wearing to a lucky viewer and I might even send a slab jig to a lucky viewer. Let me know in the comments below how long you've been watching and why I should send you a slab jig. All right, look at that bucket. So one of the rules to an exotic pour, uh, some people also call it a dirty pour. What's the difference? Nothing, exact same. My brother Mike, the marketing mastermind says, mm, dirty pour, sounds dirty. We're calling it exotic pour. And bam, exotic pour was born. Uh, so when I'm out at RK3, I'm saying dirty pour. When I'm back at Stone Coat, it's exotic, but we're going in exotic dirty pour right now. Don't blink, guys. We're gonna grab that bucket. And you could do this any way. You could swirl it, you could go diagonal. This is kind of striated. Usually the Van Gogh is kind of stacked. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give us a stack and then I'm gonna make me a white. Ooh, we never mixed the white. Then I'm gonna make a white one contrast. So here we go, buddy. Here's the money shots. Holy cow. You can see how that changes as it comes out. And when I push versus pull, see the difference there? Now I push, it's a little less, it's rolling over itself, so it's 
kind of toning it down. My gosh, this is pretty. Now I'm going to go a big one right here. Okay, I'm digging these colors already, that's for sure. Isn't that cool? I don't know if I like that though. It's kind of pretty. Let me know what you guys think of that snake skin. Wow, these, I think a lot of that has to do with that just resin stuff, man. It is so pretty. Whew. Also, guys, let me know in the comments below where the heck are y'all watching from? We love to hear where everybody is watching from. It's amazing how far the reach on YouTube really goes. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, oh, I forgot to tell y'all how I prepped my little board. Oh man, I'm messing up. So this is a little coffee table that I picked up at Walmart for about $20. It's two foot by two foot. It has little legs like this table here. It's, you know, the mini version of this. Um, it's a perfect little board to practice on. If you aren't 100% sure on how the heck you want your counters to look, you got a color scheme in your mind, order a little extra epoxy, make a practice board. If it turns out epic, you now have a legendary side table to put next to your recliner. And you also know that insurance policy in your, policy in your back pocket, it's gonna look sweet in your kitchen as long as you kind of keep those color ratios the same. So I'm gonna use a heat source to eliminate some of this air. Alcohol, 91%, will also eliminate some of that air. And to prep this little piece of laminate, this is a laminate coffee table, just like this one. I first uh, sanded the surface and edges with 150 grit sandpaper. Then I took a eighth inch round over bit on a router and rounded the tops and bottoms. That helps that epoxy really flow. Uh, then I applied one, excuse me, two thin coats. Oop, need a mixing stick. I applied two thin coats of our bonding primer and sealer from Stone Coat. Bam, right here. This stuff is pretty much brand new. It's been out for a couple months. And what it did is it replaced this. This stuff is amazing bonding primer. It's what creates a chemical bond when going over slick, smooth surfaces, creating a great foundation for your epoxy projects. Rust-Oleum hit us up. We were one of the biggest distributors of this stuff. They said, hey, uh, hey guys, thanks for your business and your support. We're not gonna be able to sell this to you for about nine months. We have a supply chain issue. Sorry, so what did we do? We developed this stuff and I've tested it side by side. It's legendary. Rhonda tested it side by side. She agrees. This will stand up right next to Rust-Oleum's XIM. So guys, audio, see ya in the trash. We're sticking with the Stone Coats bonding primer. That's what you want to use every time going over a slick existing surface, granite, solid surface, laminate, cultured marble, whatever it may be. If it's slick and it's glossy and it won't allow the epoxy to penetrate, you want to start with the bonding primer. Once that's dry, Nice thin coats, this will not color your board. It'll stay translucent. Two thin coats, let it dry. Followed by two thin coats of our, that's a messy can, of our uh, epoxy undercoat. This stuff has no ammonia. It's the best paint to use under epoxy to keep it color fast for as long as possible. If you use a paint and primer from the Home Depot or hardware store and it has ammonia in there, make sure to allow that paint to dry 24 hours before coating it with epoxy, otherwise, uh, you could get some premature yellowing as that ammonia tries to escape. We've removed all the ammonia out of that undercoat. So you could paint your board. You just kind of make sure the moisture's out. So let that first coat fully dry in about 40 minutes, half hour. And then I'll follow it with a second coat and let that dry for three to four hours fully dry. You do not want to trap moisture underneath epoxy. Now that's a pro tip. All right, guys. I'm kind of flying a million miles an hour. I probably have so many questions to answer, but let me get this contrast out real quick before, oh yeah, I do that bronze last too. Before uh, this epoxy sets up on me, man. It's getting, it's getting thick. All right, so I'm gonna make a baby white exotic pour at this point. Little white dye. A little white mica aka metallic powder, and one of my favorites, diamond dust. This is just creating that contrast. We're gonna pour it right over in a little patch, and I have a lot of this. I shouldn't have made so much. 
I'm gonna make some coasters though for folks because I care about y'all. Chris, what's the furthest somebody's been uh, within the United States? Who's watching the farthest from us? Because I can't ship. I guess I could ship a hat internationally. We got some from Canada. Hey, my homies from up north. Welcome. I love Canada. Well, All right. From Barbados. I don't even know where that is. Where is that, Chris? In the Caribbean, I think. Tight. Let's go. Let's collab. All right, folks. Where? Hmm. So now I'm looking at this bad boy and where I should put my blob of white. My little snake skin has chilled out, so that's epic. That's gone. I, I don't want to cover up this little guy because that's real pretty. Maybe I come right here. What you think, Nate? Right here? Perfect. Okay, cool. Let's go. So just pour this directly on. Ooh, yeah, it was a pretty. Now you can see why I have a tape dam, guys. Because this has a lot of material on there. I'm going to leave this tape dam on for, and that varies depending on, wow, man, I'm going to come a little bit more actually. That is a pretty contrast though, huh? All right, I'm going to let it be. I'm going to mist it with some alcohol. 91% alcohol is one of those, actually I'll hit it with a, uh, torch first get rid of that air is one of those epoxy techniques that you want to keep in your back pocket if the piece is looking a little boring to you you're not 100 percent liking it bust out the alcohol it can bring that bad boy to life and really save save the piece from you and watch what the alcohol does over this white oops that was a good pro tip you always want to see how it's a big stream I lit a piece on fire the other day, so that's why it's wide open. We don't want to do that. So adjust uh, these. These Zep sprayers are epic. They're at the HD. Home Depot, when are you going to sponsor me, man? I just send so many people to you. I'm tired of this. I get nothing out of it. <clears throat> okay, you can get these at Lowe's. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an idiot. But these are really at the big giant orange place. They're epic. They're my favorite sprayer. And right here is what you want. You can see how little I'm pulling that bad boy. When you pull it full, it atomizes. It'll get real tiny little drops. That's not what you're looking for. I'll even spray some in my hand. I learned this out at RK3 Designs at their hands-on training. I put a puddle in here. And then you drop bigger drops. Because the combination of the large and littles really does some cool stuff. Oh boy, that's pretty. That's epic. Okay, now we're gonna bring in some bronze. Wow, look how it brought all that dark up. Goodness. That's epic. Okay, last time I didn't do enough bronze, I don't think. So I'm just gonna start bringing in with my stick here a little bit of bronze. up at the questions real quick while I let this chill. Oh boy. Dang. Man, I don't really want to mess with that, but I think I want some bronze in here. And I kind of like how some of the green's poking through my white. Ooh, that's sick. Just having some fun. What y'all think of that? Ooh, pretty. Looks sweet already. 
doesn't it? Okay. Questions? Uh, Anita? Naturally, Anita. I'm pouring epoxy this weekend. Can I use a bead of silicone eh, in the back of my bathroom countertops between the countertop and the wall? Will this affect the epoxy? Absolutely. I'm so happy I'm here to help you. Silicone and wet epoxy do not mix. Uh, you could put silicone on top of like where your backsplash meets your countertop. Once the epoxy is cured, that's where you're going to want to do silicone. Silicone will repel wet epoxy. So you're going to want to use latex caulking or Bondo at that point. Like where I cut off the backsplash um, at the back of the countertop, you'll have a little gap. I'll fill that with Bondo because it's big. If your countertop's just a little tight and there's epoxy is going to run, grab yourself some Alex. Uh, I wish I had some chilling here. I don't. Grab Alex plus latex caulking. It'll dry real quick. They even have a fast dry version. Uh, just a nice tight bead. Tool off most of it out of there. Let that dry. Now you could go epoxy. It won't repel it away. Very good question. Um, never put epoxy next to silicone. I don't even open silicone when I have wet epoxy. It causes, what's the word, uh, like pitting. It, it like, golly, I forget the word. Sound like a helmet now. It will like repel it right down to the wood. It's terrible for it. Um, I'm bringing in another bit of this bronze. I'm gonna make some of this bronze just a, a little more exaggerated because then I'm gonna come back with the alcohol and mist it open. Question, have you ever used clear with just adding designs or streaks of diamond dust, metallics, and other light reflective material? Add another layer on top of that, an ambrosia maple slab. No, I have not, but that sounds epic. I have seen people do a little bit of diamond dust in woodworking clear coats all the time for sure. That's pretty. Uh, maple, ambrosia maple, that is a, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but that is a legendary, really pretty uh, color. All right, I'm gonna come back again with a little bit of alcohol after I've uh, put on my bronze and kind of open that up. Oh my gosh, this is the bronze one. That's actually what I wanted to do. So this is bronze mica powder mixed into 16 ounces of 91% isopropyl. If you want to use half your alcohol, just go to eight ounces. You're going to mix this up really well, and it does the same sort of effect as the clear isopropyl, but it'll add some bronzing. Uh, like, see this right here, it'll add some of that. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing and just, ooh, yeah. It will sell it and add a little bit of that alcohol right to, on top and catch the light just right. Oh my gosh. Whoa, that's tight. I love how the alcohol does this and then it calms down and really becomes organic. The later you do this in the process, the more busy it will stay, if that makes sense. If you really like the alligator look, you'll miss this about 50 minutes, 40 minutes after mixing. Oh, uh, I mix this at about 10 till, what time is it? One uh, twenty-four. 1.24, so yeah, it's been about 40 minutes. I have all this excess material, I'm gonna make a little exotic pour. This one's already made up, this one's a white exotic pour, so I'm just gonna add a little of that into here. That might be epic, and then add the rest of my colors. Just so I have something to put it in. Who wants a slab jig? Has anyone said? Oh, there's plenty of buzz about it. All right. How do I pick a slab jig winner? That's a tough one. All right, let's go pour these in there. This epoxy is still totally usable. How do you know when epoxy is not usable? You'll grab it here and it'll be really warm and you'll see that it doesn't move like this. That means you're a little too thick. So these are little molds I picked up on Amazon. This creates little uh, coasters, and this is a coaster holder. So these are handy little silicone molds to have laying around when you over mix. Now guys, I'm gonna mix up, oh gosh, overflow. It's okay.
but I'll do this when I'm building a countertop for customers because the, this color scheme will match their kitchen. Even though it's not going to look anything like their kitchen countertops, but the color scheme will. So when you install a counter and then you pull out these silly little coasters and the homeowner starts crying and freaking out over these more than the counter, I mean, I like it when they freak out and cry. That's a win. That's a W. So it's, if it's over these or the counters, I don't really care. As long as I'm getting paid. Guys, have you, anybody in the watching, do you guys do this for a living? Let me know. And it has anybody in the chat tried our new flooring epoxy? I went down to California recently with my buddy Nate, me and him, my camera dude. We had three floor jobs to do, all flake jobs, but they were, uh, it was about, it was about 4,000 square foot of floors. Nathan, myself, and my brother-in-law, who's never done this before, installed the three projects in four days using rental equipment, and I could have charged that, my three customers, I didn't charge them because I do this for you, uh, YouTube, but if I was the guy going out and doing this for a living, I did three floors in four days. I could have charged $23,000 for that much square footage. It's about six to seven bucks a square foot with all the prep work, materials, and applying it. You can make a serious living doing flake floors and you're literally grinding, cleaning, rolling on, sh oh boy, I almost said a bad word, rolling on epoxy and then throwing out flake, letting it cure, scraping it and putting on a top coat. And it's just like rolling on crap again. It's so, so easy. I can't emphasize that enough. If you first, first start out with your own garage, you're going to go, whoo, sweet. You could do these on the weekends and make a serious side money. And with the state of the country currently, we all need some side money. I am digging this. I don't think I'm gonna miss it anymore because I almost like it a little less alligatory. But right now what I'm doing is using a propane torch to remove any of the air bubbles I've mixed into here. And now I'm gonna wait, in Oregon here, it's about between hour two and three on pulling this. But that all is determined, folks. I can't emphasize this enough, which sometimes folks miss it. That is determined on your heat, humidity, your temperature of your, of your working area. If it was 80 degrees in here and 90% humidity, this is setting up faster. Here in Oregon, the humidity is usually in the 40s, sometimes lower. Uh, my shop's about 70s. 70 degrees. Um, that's one, it's between hours two and three, I'll come back. I'll push right here and I'll see how long it takes for that to come back and self level. I'll come here in the corner. Come show them this, Nate. I'll come here in the corner and I'll touch and then I'll pick up. You see how fast that falls off? What I want is this to come up and stay on my finger. And then I know, all right, I'm ready to pull. Um, you could see also how quickly that comes back. I I'm, we're not gonna stick around long enough time, but I'll push this and then I'll move like this. It even makes that noise. Um, but you'll see it's much more slow. What's happening is it's thickening up. It's curing. Now I'm on the right time to peel that tape. You don't wanna wait too long. You don't wanna let this set up overnight, leaving that tape. You'll come back, your edges won't be coated. Part of the reason for the tape is to keep this design really pretty and have enough material thicker so when you peel that tape, your edges look very pretty, like this. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, like right here, you could see the colors fall right on over the edge. The edge is gonna be your thinnest part of epoxy. So if you just pour all that material on, it's all gonna wash off. You'll, you would be seeing some of your undercoat. So timing is crucial on pulling that tape. And remember, you only have the tape dam on when you're doing over three ounces per square foot. All right, what, what do you got for questions? Does zero VOC paint and primer have no ammonia? Absolutely not. You wanna regularly look in there on the back. It'll tell you kind of the, mostly the active ingredients. It'll also say pri pro proprietary, uh, but the ammonia never is, so it'll list it right on there. 
that's a very good question. What about dust? I mean, there's dust even outside construction repairs. Environment, will it sink? No. Oh, so dust contamination is a thing with a glossy epoxy. So we've kind of have that solved by applying the ultimate top coat. That is your insurance policy. It sets up much faster. It's a, uh, it's a modified water-based urethane, like super durable top coat that you apply with a roller. Uh, I don't, do I have any here? I don't have any behind me that I can show you, but it mats it down a little bit, but it will, uh, it sets off way faster. So if bugs dust get on that, it doesn't affect that overall finish. So uh, if, you, if you have a real dusty area, you're worried about that kind of stuff, don't. Like, yeah, you wanna keep it as clean as possible, but then you're gonna come and sand it and apply the ultimate top coat, and then you don't have to worry about that dust getting in there. That's a great question. I just use a little heat to torch the bubbles off. Guys, my final project of the day, maybe I will have time to do this, is I'm gonna mix up a little, man, I have all this extra epoxy. People are gonna be mad at me. I overmixed but I do know where to pick up epoxy at a reasonable price. Over at StoneCoatCountertops.com. I wish I had a coupon code to share. If there's anybody, Haley, Derek, anybody in the chat, give them a coupon code. I'm feeling frisky and I want to give away a slab jig. I'm giving, okay, Chris, pick somebody who's furthest away, they're getting a hat, bam. The next person, ooh, this is, I should have had all this thought of before I, I'm live because I always mess up. But let's, uh, yeah, I like that. Sorry, I got sidetracked with the piece. Um, we gotta pick a slab jig. How do I pick somebody to win a slab jig? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. What, what's your thoughts on it, Nate? Whoever has the biggest piece. The biggest piece? How many contractors are in the house? How many people have been dreaming of doing a river table, but just need a little break to get that project underway? Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. All right, let me mix up a little more epoxy, guys. We're going on this little wood table here, folks. This is a, this is a funny story too. Um, <laughs> this table was on its way to World of Concrete with Luke and I. And Mike doesn't know this story, so I hope Mike's not watching this live. If you are, I love you, bro. I'm sorry I uh, uh, hid this from you. Luke and I had a whole trailer load to go to World of Concrete to do demos, which guys, news alert, we're heading back this year, this January, World of Concrete 2024, Stone Coat, live demos, floors, countertops, shower walls, and more, be there or be square. Uh, that's gonna be an epic time. But anyway, back to my story, story time with Big Mitch. We're driving to Vegas from Oregon. It takes about 15 hours. So Luke and I stop midway at Reno, go to the buffet, roll some dice, have a good time. We check on the load midway through when we get there. And we had a tragedy. We had a television fall off the rack and land right on this table. And it totally scratched the heck out of it. And I'm like, oh boy. Cause like the back of the TV, it broke the TV too. So step, stop one, I head to Walmart and I buy a television with my own money to hide the evidence. Step. Two, take the television out, mount it on there like it was there the whole time, handled it. Step three, we get to Vegas the next day. And it's about six at night. We have to um, fix the table. I don't want Mike to know I broke the table, right? I really didn't do it, it was the traveling, so it's all of our faults. Uh, but I don't want the blame. So I'm like, Luke, before we go out, roll some dice, we're gonna mix up some resin and coat this table. It's January in Las Vegas. It's a desert, but it can get cold in January. The resin, when it's cold, is thick and hard to mix. I'm mixing up a quart of this stuff. I'm holding the bucket as tight as I can right here. And the drill goes to full send. It like collapses the cup, rips it out of my hand. I'm inside the trailer with all the World of Concrete stuff. And epoxy is now everywhere, all over us, and all over everything including the boys to men table we delivered to Nate Morris. So Luke and I did not go roll craps that day. We spent, he went to the store and bought isopropyl alcohol and I spent, we spent hours 
wiping everything down. Mike never ever saw a single drop of epoxy that was covering everything. So anyways, now you're finally seeing this table get fixed properly. And why am I fixing it properly? To remind you all that the slab jig is back in stock. That tool is epic, guys. It is a lot of fun to use, pretty affordable. We're coming out with a reintroductory pricing that's to be determined. I didn't get that number yet, so it's gonna be lower than it is on the website. Same slab jig, nothing's changed. We're going to be improving the base plate to fit more and more uh, routers. So guys, big things coming in the woodworking world here from Stone Coat Epoxy. And I also saw, I don't know if I might get in trouble for this, but I saw some cabinet paint swatches. Uh, the, uh, we, whoa, stepped on the slab jig. Let's move it. We got some paint, uh, cabinet paint coming your way. So guys, stay tuned. More to come here from Stone Coat Epoxy. So I got this mixed up. You can see, this is a pro tip. I kind of wanted to show you what happens when you mix smaller batches. You see how much air is in there? It's totally comp normal. It's not, you can even see the difference in the big batch versus the little batch, how much air is in that. It all comes out with that heat source and you could use a propane torch, you could use a heat gun, you could even use your or your wife's blow dryer. It's very, it's like third string though. It's gonna take you a minute. I recommend not using a blow dryer, but I have to say that just in case uh, the heat gun or the blow torch is a deal breaker. It's not a big deal. The epoxy doesn't catch fire. It just eliminates the air that we just incorporated while mixing. So for the woodworking process with epoxy, it's quite different than the countertop process. So wood off gases, it's porous. As the epoxy soaks in, air bubbles soak out. Uh, so if I were to throw a nice thick three ounces per square foot coating on this table, you'd come back the next day and be like, what the heck did I do wrong? And you'd have air bubbles all over it, craters, because it's off gassing. So Mike, the mastermind back in the day, developed his, his method, which is seal coating. Like not the aquatic creature that we all know and love, it's a seal, it's sealing that bad boy. It's not gonna bark at you, bite you, and rip you down into the Pacific. Uh, we're gonna do three seal coats, nice and thin, one ounce per square foot. So if this was 10 square foot feet, I'm mixing up 10 ounces, and I'm gonna apply it nice and thin with a shower squeegee, with my hands, whatever you, whatever you really want, but it's nice and thin, it's gonna be ugly. You're gonna remove the air like from mixing, but then air is gonna continue coming off. It's normal, let it cure, come back the next day, you're gonna lightly sand that table, open up any bubbles, another one ounce per square foot. Do that three times. By that time, most all that off-gassing is sealed up, epoxy soaked in, no more air is gonna come into this thick coat, which is where we're at right now. I have three one ounce coats. Well, actually I have a bigger coat because I had to sand it off, the one that got damaged. So, but now I'm gonna apply three ounces per square foot and I'm gonna spread that with my notch trowel. and I pour my resin right into the middle. The reason I do that is because then I take my notch trowel, eighth inch by eighth inch square notch trowel, spreads a perfect coating to self-level like a sheet of glass and cure insanely hard. Uh, but I'm gonna mix this one more time. Whoo, that is pretty under there, right in the middle. So I mixed in the bucket for two minutes with a paddle mixer and a drill. You could also mix by hand, but go ahead and extend that mixing time to about four minutes, double it. And now I'm mixing this one more time. And now we're gonna take this mass and spread it around the project. And I'm gonna keep it from the edges at first. Oh boy, and then I just go right to the edge. That's awesome. Look at that piece come to life. I'm gonna come back your way with this. Now that the epoxy's in the field or all over the surface, I then start walking the mass to the edges because it's crucial to rub out those edges for a nice coat. And to do that, you just take your gloved hand and rub those edges. Whew, man, that piece looks good, doesn't it? I should have had him guess what color mica was under there. Dang it. All right, did you pick a winner for the hat, Chris? Uh, you chose uh, the first person? Yep. Barbados. The Barbados. 
So, God, uh, Barbados person, send Paul Gibson. Paul Gibson. Thanks for watching, buddy. Um, go ahead and email Mitch at stunkcoatcountertops.com your mailing address, and we'll get that prize heading your way. And while you guys are at it, write that email address down. All week long, customer service is in training. So if you call, you got to leave a voicemail, we'll call you back. I told them to put my phone number in there. They didn't want to do that. I don't know why. Maybe they were afraid I was going to sell epoxy out the back door, but I wasn't going to. I was just here to help, man. I started here at Stone Coat Counters uh, customer service with my brother. We had 5,000 subscribers, and Mike's like, all right, buddy, you're on the phone. And it was thrown into the fire. I was like, I don't even know epoxy. He's like, well, just tell, just tell him you'll, fi you'll get the answer from me. And that's how I trained. I would take calls, and when I didn't know, I'd be like, hey, can I uh, put you on hold real quick? And then I'd ask Mike. And then I had it from my knowledge base, and then we went from there, guys. I loved my time in customer service, but I also love my time here making content. This is a pretty dang good job. I am quite blessed and pleased with this blowtorch. That's what I'm looking for. So you all could see, oh my gosh, what I didn't do is chop. Okay, can you see the iridescent lines from that trowel on camera? You probably can't. It's going to be hard. Um, there's, there's little lines from from spreading that material. You wanna make sure to eliminate that. You could do that a couple ways. You could use your hands to kind of chop the top on a small top like this. But for big boys, I grab the chop brush. You wanna de-shed that bad boy. And what that means is kind of pull on the, on the bristles. You wanna get any loose bristles out. We put these through a couple uh, brush combs to try to eliminate those, but you can't get them all. So I'll pull them out and I'll get a little crazier. I'll get more fun when I start attacking it. Now we're good. And then I take that into the extra epoxy, and then I'm using the heel of that brush to chop the top. So this is a clear coat over woodworking, folks, but this can, the same process, clear coat over countertops. When I do my color coat like this, I've got those additives, I got the micas sprayed on top. Those micas float on the surface. So if I, if I did not cover that, if I didn't protect that with more epoxy, that could start wearing off of there. If I put clear epoxy over that, never going anywhere. And that also brings that uh, surface back to being food safe. So that's a crucial aspect of stone coat epoxy is this stuff is not only easy to use, enjoyable, but it's safe, guys. We don't wanna be putting your chicken breast on epoxy that is not food safe uh, all the way across the Atlantic, China coat. Don't use it for your countertops. You will regret it. And the cancer rates could go up. Um, all right, so then I take my brush and I hit those edges. Nice and easy. Boom. That knocks down any ridges. I'm gonna set this brush back into my bucket and then I'm gonna grab my blowtorch and remove that air. And remember, I mixed a smaller batch. This is also happens in the colder months. When the epoxy is cold, it will entrain more air. Uh, it will all still come out. This epoxy is open for a very long time. You don't have to be in a mega rush. The heat source is going to eliminate any of the air. Even if this was pure white, like you just mixed up that much with a drill, like a lunatic, you should never do that, and it becomes white, it will clear up. It's just going to take multiple torchings. And you're going to want to let this cool off a few minutes in between torchings because you could overheat that resin. It gets real fluid. It'll run off. So I'm going to torch it. I'll let it sit. I'll come back. I usually torch three to four times uh, depending all on how much air you've incorporated into that resin. So uh, this TS4000 burns matic Pick that up at that orange place I've been talking about. It's a great torch. Why? Because it has these holes. It won't go out no matter what angle you're at. The cheapo little chintzy burns matic torches, they go in the garbage with the XIM bonding primer, man. They're terrible. Second you go out, they, second you turn them this way, they go out and they start spitting raw propane. That will affect your countertop finish. So we're gonna just sweep this project about an inch or so from the surface. Nothing fancy. The epoxy will not catch on fire. If you stay in one spot too long, you can overheat it and it will blister. It'll like wrinkle up and get all nasty, but it won't like catch your house on fire. So don't worry about that. That's one torching. Is that a booger? 
It is. Dang it. So that's a little booger in there. Probably from the mixing paddle. Got it. All right. Questions. Let's hit, hit those up. Mrs. Peterson, is there a heat difference between the propane torch and the butane torch? Yeah, there is. Uh, butane or uh, MAP gas is the big yellow container. That's going to burn hotter. Propane burns a little cooler. So if I'm using the yellow container, instead of going this fast, I'd probably go this fast. And that it's a little hotter, so I might even come a little higher. It will still do it. It's very hard to burn this stuff. That's a great question. Uh, where are we at now? I'm pouring epoxy this weekend. I already did that one. What kind of epoxy do I use for a half inch pour over coins? That's a great question. Half inch is almost too small for um, casting resin. If it is, it all depends on volume. If, if I had a table like this, and I had pennies on that bad boy, and then I wanted to fully encapsulate them, I would probably start with a coat of epoxy or, um, or super glue to glue them pennies down. And then I'd fill them up to flush almost, and then pour another coat over them. Because the little valleys of those pennies, if you just fill it up full send, it's gonna show, it's gonna like settle in there. So you almost need to layer it up. I would probably do that in two pours. I'd bring the level up to the pennies, they're like, right over them, sand it down kind of smooth as I can, and then pour another coat over them. That's how I do that. Great question though. Look at that thing come to life, right? Man, I'm so glad Mike didn't know that. Now he's gonna watch this one day and hit me up and be like, <clears throat> not happy. I had a small pour that turned boiling hot and then solidified. What went wrong? You left it in a mass too long. That's what happened. So the bigger the mass, See, that's still good to go. The bigger the mass, the shorter the working time. That's still good to go. Um, we're using quick coat, quick coat. You gotta, hence the name, you gotta work quick. So it, it's sandable in three hours, but you gotta mix it in about a minute and get it flat. You leave quick coat in a mass like this, you got about five minutes before it's solid. It's smoking, it's hot. And at that point, that's when stone coat epoxy is no longer VOC free. It's a exothermic reaction. Look at the big brain on Mitch. It's creating so much heat. That's what's curing the resin. Um, so like the big casts, casting resins, when you see those crack, it's because they've overheated. They've put too much mass that that can handle. It gets so hot, it, it, it super cures and then it'll expand and crack. So that's the same thing that happens in the mass. Stone Coat's working time at you know 50 minutes is when it's flat on your board when you're at the countertop uh, level. Let's check this now. Yeah, you see the difference? Now we're already kinda thicker. It's not jumping off that finger. If you guys are still watching from earlier, um, you can see how it's sticking longer, right? Before, I mean, it was gone. So it's still a little too soon. I'm gonna let it go longer. But let's answer some questions. Uh, Mr. CEO Trucker, what type of wood do you use the epoxy on the bathroom floor? So you could go, our, our floor epoxy is compatible over wood or concrete. So I've applied it over wood subfloor, like uh, four by eight sheets of subfloor. Over the tongue and groove, that'd be a little too difficult. You would have a lot of gaps to fill. So if that was the case, you could either do a cement overlay, kind of level quick over all that and then pour, or, you know, it was a four by eight sheets of subfloor, you're gonna patch the seams of that with either Bondo or we have a floor, an epoxy floor patch gel that is like Bondo, but on a, mm, you could apply it for like an hour, 40 minutes. So you don't have to rush like that Bondo and then you could sand it in three hours. So that's what I would do, I'd fill those cracks and then uh, I would sand that floor and get it rid of any high points and then paint it with our epoxy undercoat paint. We have these in gallon sized jugs in our flooring um, section of the website. We've got black and white in a gallon. So I roll that out, two coats on my floor, and now you're throwing down epoxy, just like you did here. You could do this on your floor if you wanted. You're gonna need a lot of flooring epoxy though. Uh, great question. Okay, epoxy de horse. <laughs> I'm not saying the rest of that. Can you also 
order from Germany. I would like to use your products and exhibit them in the showroom. Hey, reach out to me directly on my email, whoever that guy is, uh, epoxy. Bingo, Chris, if you could hear that. I'm not even gonna to attempt to say that. <laughs> email me, Mitch at StoneCoatCountertops.com. We are, we're expanding in 2024, foreign. We're getting down more in Australia. We're going to the UK. We're getting back into Canada, woohoo! Very soon, we were just up there. So we're setting that up. Um, let me know, we wanna to get to Germany. I wanna come over for Oktoberfest. Let's do a collab, that'd be epic. Ooh. Who wants to see Mitch at Oktoberfest? <laughs> Heidi, Nate. Gambling, let's go. All right, I paid something like three to four euro for a table, a bar table, and kitchen. Wow. Did you, with epoxy, John, or what? That's awesome. I wanna do epoxy floors, trying to do a little at a time, filling holes and cracks, but all I could find at Lowe's was multi-purpose putty. Is that okay? No, it's not. Hop on the website, epoxy, let me grab it real quick. I'll give you a visual. Show them that piece again, Nate. You can see how it's kind of settled down. It's quite thickened up. So at this point, guys, what you see is what you are gonna get pretty much with that exotic pour, unless you peel that tape dam too early. What's that gonna do? More material is gonna flow off than you want. I want this nice and thick so it's all over my edges. So I'm gonna wait. The other day, the other live we did with Van Gogh, we celebrate lives by going to lunch afterwards, right? On our favorite uncle, Uncle Polytech. He takes us to lunch. Um, we enjoy that. But we were enjoying lunch a little too long, visiting, Nathan was gambling, making money, and I'm like, guys, the tape dam! <laughs> so we paid the bill, jammed home. I'm like four minutes from here at that restaurant, so it's super close. <laughs> and I get here and it was almost too late. Uh, it wasn't, thank God, but it was pushing the limits. What do you do if you are too late and your epoxy doesn't want to move? There's a few pro tips that I'm going to teach you right now. You're going to be happy you're watching this live. If I came back, I peeled this tape off and it doesn't move, you're going to grab a, a torch. You're going to come a little bit higher and start heating it up nice and slow. As you apply heat to the thicker epoxy, it's gonna liquefy it and get it to flow. I would grab scraps off my tape and start wetting the edges out, lubricating them, getting the flow. You'll be good to go. I've waited almost way too long on Mike's kitchen. Another thing he doesn't know about. That's how I know about the torch trick. Whew, that was close. All right, this is our, pack, our epoxy floor patch epoxy gel. It's a two-part system, one-to-one, -one, just by volume, and it's, it's got a good tolerance so if you're a little bit off it's still going to cure up well what you want to do is grab a paint stick you're going to get a blob of this you're going to get a blob of that put it right on the concrete you could even do the whole kit it'll take you uh if you have help i'd do the whole kit if it's by yourself do half the kit um and you're going to mix that with a putty knife until it's uniform in color it turns brown it turns a light like gray brown it kind of matches concrete um, then you're gonna overfill those cracks with that, just barely overfill them, even go tight, cause you're gonna come back and grind it back flush. Um, but that is usable for about 40 minutes, sandable in three hours, does not stink like Bondo, but in a, in a bind over wood, you can patch some stuff with Bondo. It's a good question. I wanna do a po, okay, next question, Chris. How would you do an epoxy bathroom vanity sink for Mr. CEO? Oh boy, those are a little more difficult. That's more of an advanced project. So you could do that a couple ways. You could put your colors down first, like with a sponge paint. You could use that stone spray, marble spray, something that's gonna not move. So uh, uh, color your board first, then put clear epoxy on it. And or you gotta time it really well and add your colors into that sink. Because vertical, everything's gonna run. This is a self-leveling product. So that is a, a more advanced technique but just practice, go, I mean, at, at the Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, people practically give away old vanities. Uh, I've gone to Habitat for Humanity, picked them up for practically nothing. That's something you could practice on, and in the end, you may possibly even sell it. Uh, how long do you let the resin sit before you start blending? Every time I try this technique, the colors mush together instead of staying distinct streaks. So that could be how you're building your bucket. This is a very good question. So you saw when I started doing big blobs, that could give you less busy. 
And if you pull this tape dam too early and all that material self levels off, it's gonna really stretch everything and you're gonna lose all these distinct lines. I waited so long that this thing didn't barely move. Just the very perimeter. Man, this piece is epic. I almost think I need more bronze, huh? I think it's too late. It's too late. Yeah, come in here and show them this piece, dude. This thing is epic. They're tired of looking at me. Um, Clara! Have Mitch make a short of him putting pulling the tape. Oh, that's a good idea. Clara, the goat. She is uh, an epoxy artist, Clara Lawrence Art. Go check her out. She's also a moderator for us, ATD, RK3. Guys, who? Let me know if you're also subscribed to RK3 and Artist Till Death in the comments below. I gotta pick a winner on this lab jig, bro. I don't know how. This table's sick, I only had to torch it once. All right, my slab jig is bent. You know how that happened. No, did it arrive bent, young star? Or did it bend while working on it? It shouldn't, like Mike and I have stood in the center of these bad boys. And I'm, on, I'm like 260, bro. I don't know how that would get bent unless it showed up bad. Uh, reach out to me, buddy. Mitch at stonecoatcountertops.com. Let me see what I could do about at least, you know, sending you a couple new rails, man because it's all compatible. The old brackets would go to the new rails. They're all the exact same. It was a pain, but no, I didn't say <laughs> pop a bean, bro. No, it's not trash. Still a very good product, but so is this. This is the exact same stuff for cheaper, for less money. It's perfect for our countertop system and also for anything you need a chemical bond. XIM's not trash, it's just equal to this. <laughs> I did throw it in the trash though. <laughs> I was more mad at XIM because they told us, sorry guys, you can't have it no more. So that's where I'm a little salty with XIM, but it's a legit product, it's very good. Uh, do you know anywhere in Canada I could get the fiberglass roll for shower back? Soon from Stone Coat Countertops. Uh, we are gonna have that up in Canada. There's a couple distributors we're actually setting up currently. You may even see yours truly up in Canada helping with hands-on training. It's gonna be fun. I've never been up there, eh? Let me know how it is. Anybody from Canada watching? Save me some maple syrup. For sure. How do you clean your tools? Like, you able to reuse your mixing buckets? Absolutely. These little guys I don't really reuse. Um, here, I'll show you what I'll do. I don't, I wouldn't pour all this out, but like if this is my bucket, right? Give me a stick. If this is my bucket, you know, it's got residue in it. What I, what I do is I just flip it up upside down. And what that does, it all kind of go, it dries, it gets crusty. Tomorrow I'll come back, pick it up, and it usually will be like a flat cured bit of epoxy. And I just squeeze in this bucket and pull it out like a glove and the bucket's good to go. Uh, when I'm doing a new job, I'm still in the habit of using a brand new bucket just, just in case there's a little booger. Like that's what was happening here. I used an old bucket and I had a little piece of cured epoxy in my clear coat. On a color coat like this, it's not gonna matter. Clear coat, use a new bucket. Uh, okay, for, your, for these, throw them away. That's why we don't charge you very much for them. They're a throwaway item. These notch trowels, that's why we have this little angle on here. There's two reasons. So number one reason is oftentimes people will like trowel way too low. That's actually taking off too much material. So when you see this angle and it's perpendicular, is that the proper one, Chris? To the bottom? Yeah, or parallel. If this is parallel with the surface, you're- Parallel, yeah. See, I was right. So when this is parallel with the surface, you're at the perfect angle for the right amount of troweling. If you're angled too much, you're gonna pull way too much material off. So what that also seconds as is a little stand. So I'll set my trowels up just like that. And then all that resin pours down to the bottom. And then it's usually, golly, 20, 30, like a lot of times troweling. Like here's a dried one right here. You can see, I mean, it's not really enough to pick off. The teeth are still wide open. If you lay this down, the teeth will get filled up, then you can't use it. So then you would have to scrape all that out. But if you keep it like this, 
you got 20 uses before then, I would take a sheetrock knife and kind of pop it under there and then it peels right off, brand new trowel. Great question. Um, the paddle mixers, I leave, I let them build up. Uh, I don't even fart with them unless the stalactites get too sharp and they start breaking my buckets, then I'll get a new one. Um, but you got hundreds of mixings uh, per paddle mixer and it's still good to go. Mm, these guys, have you seen these yet? And if you have a cool logo sticker, send it to yours truly. I'll add it to my plunge can. This thing's got 91% um, isopropyl alcohol in it. So you could just push down and get the perfect amount of isopropyl to do a thorough cleaning. I love it. Okay, guys, I think we're about wrapped up. I can still answer some more questions. Who's got a project? I gotta give stuff away too. We gave away the hat. We're giving away the slab jig. How? What's the question we ask, man? Okay. Hmm. We got some good submissions. Okay. Right. What are they? Oh, just uh, talking about the projects. Or, uh, I got them here. Mm-hmm. Well, pick one then, Chris. You pick. Chris is picking the winner for the slab jig happening right now. So I would get in the comments. Let Chris know why you should be the one to win the slab jig. What can I do with this, bro? This is sad. I got all this resin. Don't, don't pay attention how much resin I mixed up. Let me know in the comments below also if you have a project that I could come help you with, uh, especially if you're here in Oregon because I don't want to travel as much. I've been traveling like a madman. Um, guess what else, guys? We have an exciting, exciting new project, video project coming up, Netflix style show where we're going to come to the insider. An insider, we're going to go to four different Stone Coat Epoxy Insiders. Uh, do you know what that is? That's our Facebook group. Go join it right now. It almost has 100,000 people in there. Uh, tips, tricks, helpful people walking you through your projects. A great place to share what you also create. And what we're going to do is we're going to reach out to four people. We're doing a four episode season one Netflix style show. If your house was taken down in a hurricane, reach out. I'm your man. I'm going to come build you showers, floors, countertops, and more. If your house is burned up in a wildfire, I'm your man. Whatever it may be, guys, we want that heartwarming story. Why should we come help you in your project? Would it make good TV? Maybe. We're going to try to uh, beat Netflix out on YouTube. YouTube is the place to be. This is so much fun. And we, we want to showcase you guys. We want to show, I want to help you do your project. So it's not just me doing all this. People go, yeah, you could do it because you do this every single day. I want to help DIY Jane out there dominate her kitchen remodel, man. Let's go. Get in the comments. Get in my email. Let me know why we should pick you. But we have major details coming on that. So if you haven't right now, subscribe to this channel. Share this video. The first person to jump over to our new YouTube short, share it on social media, comment, hey Mitch, I shared it, I love the live, is gonna win the slab jig. Boom, tell me who does it, we're gonna verify. Let's go, it's going, right, unless you already picked. We'll send two slab jigs for all I care. Did you already pick somebody? I already got two, uh, possibly. Okay, okay, cool. You didn't tell them they won yet though, right? No, not yet. Okay, good, good job, Chris. Chris the goat. What was the uh, criteria? The criteria, go to our YouTube short on the slab jig. We just put it up. You need to comment in there. I love the live. Where can I buy the slab jig? Boom. And then come back to this and say, I just shared it. The first person who does that and Chris verifies it, gets the slab jig. Okay. And then by that time, we're gonna almost be ready for this. And then I picked another winner? Yeah. Okay, what'd you pick? Uh, Janelle Paxton, they say they got slabs that need a slab jig. That's who's getting it. Janelle. All right, reach out. Um, if you have never worked with Stone Coat Epoxy and woodworking, email me, Mitch, at StoneCoatCountertops.com. I need that uh, shipping address anyways. We're going to send you a slab jig, and then I'm going to tell you exactly how much casting resin and countertop epoxy you're going to need to create a stunning, beautiful table like this. Or charcuterie board, man. Is that how you say that? Charcuterie, yeah. I think I said it differently though. <laughs> oh boy. Homer. 
<laughs> I just homered right behind the Van Gogh granite. That was epic. Oh, guys, I've been behind the computer way too much doing website redo. We are totally redoing our website. If you haven't checked, it's a little complicated to find stuff. So we are streamlining all sorts of things, a whole new theme, rebranding. We are bringing resources that are gonna help you go down that project to success from the beginning. If you're an epoxy beginner, don't know where to start, we got an asset for you, a whole landing page that walks you through top to bottom on how to redo your kitchen with Stone Coat Epoxy right over your existing surfaces. Uh, it's gonna be an epic website. Uh, okay, what else? We got any more questions, Chris? Otherwise, we got some. So are they there? Can you see? I'm seeing the old ones. Melinda, uh, let's see here. I got, did the fiberglass roll. How do you clean your tools? I did that one. Can a clear coat and mix with beach sand to put to make a? F yes. Oh, cool. Ooh, beach sand. That'd be sweet. So you certainly can. So we have a non-skid additive ourselves. Is it over here? Yup. We sell a non-skid additive that we broadcast into the flooring top coat. This creates a grip. So this could also be applied in the countertop epoxy as well. Um, and how I would do that is you either mix it into it or you could broadcast it over the top, but it will dole it down a little bit if you do that. It kind of fogs it a hair. So uh, that's what you want to want to use. I wouldn't use beach sand, but okay, here's, a, uh, here's something that's coming very, very soon is I'm going to create a shower pan on dense fiberglass. Like they have preformed shower pans out of dense, dense foam, like from Schluter or Ardex. There's a couple different brands that make them. Uh, they're very easy to install. You just thin set them down and then they're made to tile, but they're already pre-sloped for the guys who don't know how to do that. It's kind of a skill, a little harder DIY skill than just installing a pre-sloped shower pan. So we're gonna take that pre-sloped shower pan. I'm gonna put down our moisture seal epoxy primer that really makes a good foundation. And the same place we pick up our epoxy flakes for the flake floor system, they sell ground up colored quartz. So then you're gonna broadcast that onto the thin layer of epoxy on your shower pan um, until it's fully dry, let it cure. And then you'll come vacuum and sweep up all the rest. And you're left with a beautiful colored quartz shower pan that is like a thousand grit sandpaper. It won't hurt your feet and you will not slip and slide and fall on your butt. So I got a crazy another story. You guys get some cool uh, story times with Big Mitch here on our lives. And this is one that goes way back, long before the epoxy was even a thing. My brother uh, was in a home, in home renovation, so was I. And he was doing a shower for this customer and the husband and wife yelled a lot at each other, didn't talk nice to each other, didn't like each other very much, especially the wife to the husband. And Mike goes and does the shower pan with tile and leaves a grout joint, right? Because grout joints give you grip when it's a wet tile shower pan. The homeowner says, tear it out. I want those tiles tight. I don't want any grout. Mike goes, no, no, you need it for grip. No. I want it smooth. So Mike, being the smart businessman that he is, had the lady sign something. Well, Mike was back months later doing not just the bathroom, he's back for a giant kitchen, cabinets, everything. Uh, the lady got paid, why? Because Harold got into the shower, slipped, RIP Harold. True story. So do not make a slick shower pan with tile. Use grip, use grout joints to keep you firm on your feet. Learn from poor Harold, RIP bro. Uh, ugh, not good, but at least he's in peace. Um, guys, I think I'm gonna pull this. It's a little early. No, it's just gonna all run off if I pull it. And that would be counterproductive to how pretty this piece is. My wife, I think, is gonna want this next to recliner. So you could see this white section. I left that all the way tight to the tape. So when I peel that tape, the white flows over. And then that white section is right here on the edge. Guys, before I leave, questions, let, them, let me have them right now. We're almost out of here. Did anybody win the slab jig? Besides that one gal, did anybody do the, uh, the YouTube short challenge? Yeah, we got some submissions for that. Who was the first one? First one, so oldest, I'll 
We have one from before the live, actually. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? They shared it? Uh, oh, for sharing it? Yeah, they had to share it on their social. They had to comment in that video, and then they had to tell us in this live that they did that. I... Christy Morawski was saying that she was a... She shared Christy, it. she wins. She's the GOAT. She was one... Uh, she gets the slab jig. Christy, you got this girl. Share it on social media. When you get that, unbox it. We have a video that teaches you how to put that bad boy together. You could make a serious living out of making these things. Um, I made a big, okay, for example, real quick numbers wise. Um, Redwood, it's 12 foot slabs. I bought uh, one big Redwood slab. It cost me about 900 bucks. I cut it in half, flipped it around, put the edge in the middle. So that created the river, right? And then I used, it was 12 kits of Supercast. It's huge, it was a lot. And I did it in two pours because it was so big and it was also three and a half inches thick. So I did it in two pours. And then I coated it with probably two, four gallons of epoxy with the seal coats and the flood coat. I don't know all those numbers, but it's probably three grand total that I have invested in that table. And maybe 10 days of little bit of work here and there, not a lot, not heavy days. The hardest day is leveling it, and that's not even hard. Um, but I could turn around and sell that table easily for 15K, easy, maybe even more. And that all depends on how you market that table. Greg, the burl hunter, does some amazing exotic work with some wood slabs and sells them for 25K. It's epic. He puts a UTC right on them, and they are epic. They are uh, very durable. I'm building one currently for a firehouse down in my hometown where I uh, was born and raised in Elk Grove, California. I played football with these guys, went to high school with them. Now he's the captain of the firehouse and he's getting the most epic bad A <laughs> river table. They're having a table contest. They're gonna win. That's coming down very soon. Do I need, okay, Rick Hay? RK asked, do I need cement board behind shower walls? Yeah, you need something there for sure. You don't want to put shower walls on studs with no, no backing. The foam will flex. So you either put, uh, you, you want that shower ready for tile just in case water gets behind there. So you, you either have cement board and you red guard waterproof membrane that bad boy. You do the Schluter or Ardex system to waterproof that ready for tile. And now instead of taking all that time uh, thin setting tiles up, you could just silicone your, your uh, shower walls up. So quick little recap on showers before we go. That's the pink foam from the Home Depot. You could go one inch or half inch. You could even go thicker, but remember, if you add a lot of depth on that shower wall, you gotta make sure your handle is still good. So if it's new construction, you know you're gonna add a, an inch or a two inch thick foam if you wish. Just make sure your handle is set out to accommodate that extra thickness. Uh, this is one inch foam. I cut it to size and I use three ounces per square foot of quick coat and then fiber mesh. That is uh, this what the, the gentleman in Canada was asking for. It's almost like a three foot wide roll of uh, fiber mesh reinforcement for drywall, right? To hide seams. It also makes it really strong, almost like a surfboard. So we put three ounces of quick coat, put the fiber mesh, let it dry. I come back with three more ounces of quick coat to fully embed that um, fiber mesh. When that, so you could also do this two ways. I've painted my quick coat after it cured with our white undercoat. If you tint your quick coat pure white or you use the amazing quick coat from Alumalite that practically never yellows, tint it white, you can uh, skip painting that uh, epoxy white. Because what you don't want to do is put your color coat over this pink, because if this is too thin, you'd have pink showing through, and that would not look good, unless you're going to do a pink shower. Um, but then from here, guys, we're at countertop now. It's ready like a, uh, a countertop to pour. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are probably tired of me talking and having fun. Hey, Mitch. Yeah. We got room for one more slab jig winner. Mm, how many did we give away? Just one officially? I think two. You've, you've called another? Oh, yeah, we did. Christy and who else? Oh, the gal who has some. Janelle Pax. All right, we got to pick a dude now. How about Brumstone Transformations? The contractor, the dream and about a slab jig. All right, dreams come true here at Stone Coat Countertops. 
We got you, man. Email me, Mitch at StoneCoatCountertops.com, and I'll get you a slab jig. You're going to have to be a little bit patient because they are going to release at the end of this week, fingers crossed. Uh, so when that starts rolling, we'll get a couple your way. Hey, Mitch, have you seen any possums lately? RK3 Designs, my favorite lady in the world besides my mother and wife, Rhonda. Okay, if you all don't know about that story, Rhonda and I were in Michigan working on UTC together with uh, Polytech, Keep getting some kinks ironed out. And I'm taking Rhonda out to supper, and we walk into this place that you actually like cook your own steaks on volcanic stones. Like, I was the sap who thought it would be cool to pay 70 bucks to cook my own steak. <laughs> Idiot. But it was kind of cool. I was on like a volcanic stone. It made me think of my brother because he lives on a volcano. Uh, but anyway, we come walking into the restaurant. Oh, I'm, I'm cramping because I'm laughing. And <laughs> there's an epoxy floor on there. I'm like, is that an epoxy floor? <laughs> and Rhonda screeches. And jumps on my lap practically <laughs> and said, She thought I said, Is that an opossum on the floor? <laughs> ah, I'm cramping again. So I laughed my butt off at that. So thank you, Rhonda, for that memory. Is there an opossum on the floor? No, there wasn't. There was just an overpriced volcanic stone that I had to cook my own meal at. Like the cooks are in the back laughing. Stupid gringo, man. He, he's cooking his own dinner. It was epic. Oh, what else? That's it, guys. We're done. What about uh, that question from Claire Lawrence? That one's for you. Uh, sloping on the bathroom floor. So yeah, no, very good question, Clara. Clara's uh, question is about too much slope on a floor for epoxy because epoxy is a self-leveling product. It's gonna flow where, where the slope is. So there's a couple reasons you're gonna have a slope on your, your concrete floor. Main one in a garage, they're always sloped away from the house. So if they get wet, the water flows away from the home and not you know puddles up and pulls up in the garage. So those slopes are usually minimal and they're not gonna affect your flake floors at all, but your metallics might flow a little bit. We put that theory to the test over at Rhonda's in Texas. We did Kenny's golf room. He's got a golf simulator room. It was 25 by 25 and an eight foot run, it had an inch and a half slope. So think about that, that is pretty extreme. Uh, we got a time lapse showing, we just poured all the resin and everything flowed about that much, like and then it stopped. Um, what I was worried about was at the very top, if it if it flowed too much, it would you know be too thin. It would expose some of the concrete below or the sealed concrete below. It didn't do that. It was good to go. We did about four ounces per square foot. That flowed covered uh, perfectly. Um, if you have a really extreme slope, sometimes you'll have a slab coming and then they'll have a drain in the middle that kind of is pretty steep. That's where you gotta really use caution. You don't wanna push too much material because it will pull up. I would, uh, if that was me, I would pull my drain cover off and I would plug up that drain. So you don't want the epoxy going down that drain. And I would use caution where it's really steep to not push too much material so it just piles up. I would feather that. And then um, the last thing I'm gonna do probably because I was walking on a floor for a good hour and a half before you want to get off of that bad boy, is I'd go over there, I'd s get all that epoxy that's pulled up in my plug out of there, I'd pull the plug, I'd clean it really good with isopropyl and let it be. It's, it's by, by a couple hours, it's done flowing for the most part. And then by that point, it's maybe a little bit will go, but usually not by that time, nothing else is gonna flow. Um, the flake system, because that moisture seal epoxy primer is so thick, uh, if I had two extreme of drains like that, that's the system I'd go for because that will not drain. It's a really sticky, thicker material that goes down initially and it really penetrates in and it's not as fluid as your uh, epoxy mid coat is. Uh, any more questions or are we the heck out of here? I wanna add a B, oh, already did that one. Make that bigger too, or are we done? I think we're done. Let me see if I could pull this yet though. What time is it? 2.20. Well, it's only an hour. It's not long enough. Not long, sorry guys. What we'll do, like Clara said, is 
Uh, I'll, I'll stick around about another hour. I'm not going to stick around live because you guys aren't asking me any project questions. So I'm going to just stand here with my thumb in my sugar bowl. I don't like that. I get a little awkward and embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. I was wondering about uh, expand that to maximum dog. It's cutting off part of the words. It is. Yeah, like the screen is small. There you go. Something's up with it. <laughs> now it's even smaller. <laughs> I need to like, here we go. There we go. Question, uh, Joel, I'm wondering about installing epoxy on a bathroom floor with a drain. Hey, we just answered that one. Okay. I thought it was easier to leave the bucket upright and leave the stick in it. Then dry, pull up the stick. That also works, Young Star. That's another technique on. Uh, Young Star was talking about leaving like a mixing stick like this in the bucket, man, that's still fluid. Look at that. Whew. Leaving a mixing stick in there, letting it cure, and then you use that stick as a handle to pull out. I've also made a cell phone holder that way in casting resin. I had like a block of supercast that I had too much mixed up. So I put a big mixing stick. I didn't realize what I was making, but it was angled perfectly. I pulled it out. I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. Set a tablet up there. It was like a tablet TV stand. It was epic, made my own thing. Uh, I think that is it. Are you a... <laughs> Johnny! All right, impact estimates. Are you appearing on the next season of Stranger Things? Uh, because of the writer's strike, Johnny, I'm sad to inform you, Stranger Things season five has been canceled, as well as all autographs as the hop by yours truly. truly. So Johnny from Impact Estimates, guys, a floor contractor out in Florida. I met him out at RK3 Designs, hands-on training. Uh, if, you have, if you need a little extra kick to get this epoxy game going, check out RK3 Designs, hands-on training. I attend most of those pro classes where we help really give you the tools in marketing, uh, strategy, epoxy finishes, fabrication on how to turn this into a real life business. There's a bunch of success stories out of RK3 Designs. So if you are looking for extra income, you want to do this for a living, rk3designs.com. Check out those pro classes. Anyways, I met Johnny out there. Great dude. He does floor epoxy out in Florida. Epic contractor. He also does countertops, but he has an estimating software, Impact Estimates. Uh, for those of you in the epoxy game, you're at a customer's house. You are uh, wanting to bid 50 square feet of countertops. You don't know where to start. You don't know how much to charge them. You don't know how much that's gonna cost you. Johnny over at Impact Estimates has an app. He's currently developing. It's almost on iOS. It's also available on your laptop, but you could enter your square footage. It'll spit out exactly how much stone coat epoxy you need, how many additives you need, uh, how much ultimate top coat you need. You could say, I want a 15% margin. It's going to tell you what to charge the customer, what to upcharge those products to maintain that margin. And then it prints it out on a beautiful, nice little contracted summary page that gives your customer a nice warm hug, letting them know everything's okay. I'm going to take the best care of you. Everything's listed here and checked off, ready to go. All you need to do is send me your money and then I'm going to come install this beautiful countertop in your home. Check it out. Uh, Johnny, if you're still on, put your link to your website in the description below. This is a valuable tool, folks, that you want if you're an epoxy contractor. He also does it for floors, man. That is epic. That's a hard thing to do. Uh, you, you, we are adding, speaking of floors, we're adding a, uh, a floor visualizer to our website, an augmented reality, where you could take a picture. Oh my gosh, I'm knocking stuff down. You could take a picture of your kitchen and soon you'll be able to put a Van Gogh green over your countertops in your own home. You're going to be able to change the color of your cabinetry to the six amazing popular cabinet refacing colors that we're going to have to offer. You're going to be able to see what metallic floor looks best in your kitchen or what flake floor looks best in your garage. We're up leveling and trying to bring you the best assets to help you head down the road to success using Stone Coat Epoxy, guys. Enough of me yapping. Chris, we got all the winners marked off. We got the hat going to somebody. Uh, guys, I had a great time here today. I'm now hungry. It's time for lunch. I'm getting hangry. Hey, who liked my grumpy picture, man? It was epic, right? Oh, 
We're also going to possibly get sponsored by the one and only Pit Viper because uh, while we were out in PA, Pennsylvania, we were shooting Renovation Hunters Season 2, the final episode. We did uh, two showers, two vanities, and an island for a, a family whose father died of ALS. So, you know, my father died a couple years ago of cancer, so this one touched close to home. I was really really blessed to be part of that project and see the the smiles on that family's face when they saw their fishing cabin completely remodeled by hard work of all these volunteers as well as their beautiful showers done by stone coat epoxy all right enough of that um where was i going i'm done i was saying goodbye right yeah, yeah, i'm out of here it's way too long thanks for being here everybody uh, in the meantime if you need some project questions handled if you're on the fence about uh, starting that countertop, floor, tabletop, woodworking, shower project with Stone Coat Epoxy, please reach out to yours truly all week long, uh, all year, all forever long at Mitch at StoneCoatCountertops.com. I'm going to be monitoring that email. I'm going to be doing website work. I want to help you head down that road to success using Stone Coat Epoxy. And until next time, from all of us here at Stone Coat Countertops, don't forget you got this.